on Tuesday, March 9th, uh, 2021 at 6 p.m. We're meeting via Zoom and uh, teleconference call. Uh, with that, the meeting, I've called the meeting order. Uh, we're having a uh, couple assessment hearings and, uh, and that, and uh, final resolutions on that this evening, and another item at the end. So we'll go to item number two, two, and that's an assessment hearing for 10th Street South from Airport Avenue to Grove Avenue. And I'd like, I'd like to start with um, our city engineer, Bill likes that if you could just uh, uh, give us a synopsis, I guess, on what the project was and is and that uh, whatever. So. Sure. Thanks, Tom. So yeah, I'll go through a quick introduction to the assessment hearing and the special assessment um, calculations just so that everybody's on the same page. Um, the assessment hearings are a formal public manner in which assessment the assessment report can be reviewed, uh, questions asked, and uh, any disputes made. Uh, this would include such things as, as errors and omissions uh, related to the report. And uh, we ask that uh, the public comments are specific to, to the uh, accuracy of the assessment report. So how are special assessments calculated? Uh, they're based on the lineal footage of frontage along the street or per each for, for some items in particular. Uh, the basic parameters for calculating assessments are as follows. The street surface scene is assessed at 20% 20, 20 of the actual cost of street surfacing. Curb and gutter is at two thirds of the cost. Sidewalk and driveway approaches 100% uh, is assessed for defective concrete. The non-defective concrete, concrete that's in good shape, is not assessed. Um, additionally, utility services are assessed at 100%. And then sewer and water main uh, is not assessed for replacement projects. Um, the non-assessable portion is, is uh, paid for by the, by the city. Regarding how special assessments are paid for, um, at the um, end of the construction project, once all the final costs are in, um, by October 1st of any calendar year, um, if, if the uh, you know once once we get through this process with the assessment hearing, uh, those costs would get rolled on to the property taxes, the property tax bill. And the, the unpaid balance at that time uh, would uh, determine what payment plan uh, it would get rolled into. Um, so if, if assessments totaling um, between $300 and less than $1,000 would be placed on a five-year payment schedule, and $1,000, between $1,000 and $5,000, they'd be placed on a 10-year payment schedule, and then anything uh, above $5,000 would be automatically placed on a 15-year payment schedule. Uh, the 2021 interest rate is currently 3.25%. Uh, and um, with that, I'll, I'll give a, a brief introduction or summary of the engineer's report specific to the 10th Street uh, Special Assessment Hearing. So there are 23 properties along 10th Street that are uh, included in, in this assessment hearing. Uh, the total cost of assessments is $47,467.49. Uh, there's a little bit of an explanation for what's included in the calculation on this project. Uh, the 10th Street project is somewhat of a hybrid project from our normal street reconstruction projects. It includes combination of both a water utility replacement and I guess somewhat of a, a street maintenance slash reconstruction. Um, so the, the assessment protocol that we uh, that we used slightly modified than, than our normal reconstruction projects. Uh, because of the unique nature of, of the work for this project, um, Water and Light has agreed to pay for the east side curb and gutter, which is the curb and gutter on the east side of the street, which was in good condition. Um, the water services 
uh, that connect up to that new water main were essentially reattached to the new water main. And then the, the west side curb uh, was patched in a couple locations, was otherwise largely remained intact and was in, in good, good condition. So in, in summary, the items not assessed uh, in this project were um, the curb and gutter, water and light was going to be picking up that cost. Um, the new water main was situated directly underneath that, that east side curb line, uh, which was, like you mentioned, in good, good condition. Um, also not assessed are the water services and other concrete flat work uh, driveway approaches and sidewalk sections that were in good condition. And the permanent street surfacing uh, is the only item that's being assessed uh, for this project. Um, there were two properties in the in the assessment that had some sign had signed waivers for replacing additional sidewalk and uh, uh, concrete approaches. And so the the asphalt pavement um, prior to the the repaving was was 50 years old and had had reached its normal uh, life expectancy. Uh, initial notification letters. Uh, were sent out for the preliminary resolution August 2nd, 2018, with the preliminary resolution being approved June 19th, 2018. And that concludes my assessment report. Thank you, Joe. And with that, uh, I will open the public hearing on uh, for 10th Street South from Airport Avenue to Grove Avenue. Uh, if there's anybody there out there that like to comment or ask questions uh, on uh, what their assessment bill was. Uh, feel free to speak up. Uh, just for the record, we'd like to have your name so we can put that down on the record. So, is there anybody um, that I'll left? start. Oh. Okay, okay, to start, Tom? Yep, go ahead, Dave. Uh, this, this is Dave Lasma, 2931 10th Street South. I was the city engineer retired six years ago. I guess my first objection is this type of public hearing. We used to always have the hearing prior to the project so the property owners could object to the special assessments prior to the project. Um, I also object to the permanent street surfacing assessment. Although 10th Street is more than 20 years old, it was in good shape except for the only the damage from water and light continually repairing the water main. And um, this is the only reason it's been torn up at this time, because of the defective water main. Also, I think water and light should at least pay if, if half of the street surfacing, because they tore out half the street, the others because of their water main. Or, and, or another uh, method would be to charge the property owners at the overlay street surfacing rate because other than the water main replacement, 10th Street wouldn't have been reconstructed in anywhere near future. It would have been probably an overlay at best. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, my name is Richard Antonoja. I live at 2940 10th, 10th Street South. And I guess. My comments are to agree with, with uh, what Mr. Laspa said. Uh, our street was not in bad shape, except for the spots where the main, where the, where the water and light had to tear it up to fix their main. I don't see why we have to pay for a new street when it really did, it didn't need a new street. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Hearing none, is uh, staff, do you have any comments or anything? Sure, I'll, I'll just uh, comment a little bit. I think uh, Dave makes a good point, but uh, with any of these projects, you know, we do take a look at the the ordinance, 
the ordinance is specific for any um, streets that are over 20 years old. Um, and, you know, the, the condition of the pavement and the ability for the city to continue to maintain it in perpetuity is, uh, is something that I think can always be debated. I think there's always good arguments there. Uh, but this project, other than not replacing um, some of the other underground utilities, isn't all that different than any other project with an aged um, street surface. Uh, 50 years is, you know, while the ride quality was, was OK, um, th there is an improvement there. It is a new pavement. And, um, and so that's just my comment. I, I, I'm certainly not arguing any, you know, any of what Dave and Richard had to say is certainly uh, reasonable. It's just the nature of uh, assessed projects with the ordinances that we have in place currently. Well, I'll call for a second time if there's any uh, further questions by anybody out there in the audience with this project. Can I, can I make, have one more question? Sure, go ahead. Can somebody explain to me what a hybrid project is and, and, and what was the reason for it? Sure. Yeah, so that, that's my, my terminology. I guess uh, our typical, typical uh, reconstruction projects that we, we would typically, typically see is that we'd have sanitary sewer replacement, we'd have water main replacement, storm sewer replacement. Both curb lines would be deteriorated in bad, bad shape. Every, you know, the entire width of the roadway would get torn up and replaced, and then the corresponding assessments would follow. Uh, with 10th Street, it was slightly abnormal in that the, you know, we were just replacing one utility line, and it was only impacting. Um, Know, the east half of the street and only a portion of the east half of the street and it was affecting um, the curb which was largely the curb which was in good good condition um, the asphalt pavement I guess is arguably uh, you know it's, it's a question um, certainly reached an age um, you know a full type of life expectancy and had been riddled with with patches patches but um, so that, that's kind of what I mean by a, a hybrid project. It, was, it wasn't it was really a full rebuild. It wasn't just a maintenance project either. Hope that helps. And I'll call a third time if there's any other, anybody out there that has any comments to make. Hearing none, I will uh, close the public hearing, and with that, we vote uh, uh, item number three, and that's uh, uh, consider a final resolution for special assessments related to 10th Street South from Airport Avenue to Grove Avenue. Uh, committee, uh, what are your thoughts or wishes on this? Uh, There's been some, I guess, disagreement maybe with the project itself or whatever, but uh, uh, there were hearings, I believe, before, beforehand in that, and um, now we're here to see if there's any, I guess, discrepancies on what the uh, end results of the assessments are. Um, So there were hearings held on this ahead of time regarding Dave's question. What was that? There were hearings held on this. This is the hearing, Dean. But you had said there were hearings. Tom had said something and hearings held ahead of time before the project. I believe oh. the staff, staff, you met with out on the field with the representatives I do believe beforehand with the right so the the public hearing process Dave that you're familiar with has changed a little bit um, 
the and, and Mr. Chairperson, if you'll allow me, I'll try to make this brief, but as complete okay. as I can. Yep. Um, some of the issues that that okay. we were experiencing um, with the previous process is that there was a general expectation that the public hearing was more about um, components of the project, not about the review of the engineer's report. And that's what the that's what the public hearing is supposed to be about is is the preliminary resolution um, defines the project and the city's intent to uh, levy special assessments. And uh, the city worked through the, the process in, in considering how do we, how do we avoid um, design by committee on projects? Uh, for example, on projects where the city ordinance require sidewalk, um, you know, there's some discussion at a public hearing that's not supposed to be about that, and sidewalk gets removed from the project. And, and so that's, that, those, those are kind of inappropriate activities um, related to the public hearing process. And so what the League of Municipalities has um, offered an opinion on, and many municipalities have done it this way, is for the municipality to change its ordinance language and to allow uh, the public hearing, because it is to review the assessment report at the conclusion of the project, and to use actual costs rather than uh, a speculative cost. For example, if we had the public hearing a year or two prior to the project, uh, property owners may be specially assessed um, closer or further from that 20%. Um, but because costs change over time, the, the, the decision was made to have the public hearing afterwards so that actual costs could be used. And so the, the argument there was that that way the city's being fair and not maybe undercharging some residents and charging others the, the, the full percentage. So the, the question about is it, is it permissible, um, the city attorney certainly thinks it is. Um, the League of Municipalities certainly believes it is, and um, and I believe that the city's ordinances are are consistent with uh, with the state statutes, and that the the process that we're uh, having today is consistent with the city's ordinance. So um, I believe it's correct, but of course, if it isn't, um, or you believe that it isn't, there is a formal appeal process that's outlined in statutes for uh, for these types of uh, special assessment matters. Uh, Mr. Chairman, did uh, was Water and Light uh, approached at all with uh, this uh, project? And if so, what type of comments did they have about this? I don't know, Joe or Joe, did you have anything, comments? For and light uh, I Dennis, wasn't aware of any Dennis I'm sorry I don't I don't know if your mic wasn't on or I really didn't hear the question I'm sorry well I was wondering whether or not water and light was contacted on this project and if so if they had any input on it one way or the other yes so our process in advance of these projects is to um, request priorities from all of the city's utilities. Um, so I've asked, and I'm, I've done that this year also as we're preparing for our next um, capital improvement plan, but we ask for uh, a list of priorities for our streets, for our um, underground infrastructure, storm sewer, for our utilities, um, underground, sanitary sewer, and water also. And so then the challenge, of course, is evaluating those priorities and selecting the projects because the priorities outweigh our capacity to, uh, to perform these projects. And so some projects are uh, a high priority for, say, the, the city because the street surface is bad and maybe a slightly lower priority for the utilities 
or maybe one utility where maybe water and light really doesn't the project's not their highest priority they'd rather see a different one but again for, for the sake of uh, coordinating work it makes sense to try to do as much as possible when it makes sense um, so on this project this was a high priority for water and light and um, water and light had also had a number of projects recently that they participated in that were a little lower priority for them um, and so this is one of those projects where there were some significant concerns about the integrity of the water main and uh, and the possibilities of service outages and that raised this project to the opinion of staff that it uh, would fall into our capital improvement plan it was in the capital improvement plan for several years and and each year um, the utilities are asked to update their their priority list so a little bit of a long answer to your question but I hope that explains um, you know the process and then in fact water and light was involved in the project in other words, they would have no intentions of pursuing it with first any cost uh, payments, I would assume. Thank you, Joe. Well, committee, then we're to the Considering the final resolution, and uh, I'll move that we pass a final resolution on this for the special assessment related to 10th Street, South from Airport Avenue to Grove Avenue. Second. I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second to approve the final resolution on 10th, 10th Street South from Airport Avenue to Grove Avenue. Uh, committee, if there's no further questions or anything, we'll vote on that. Committee, all in favor, respond by aye. Aye. Okay, go, go ahead. Just as long as Mr. Laspa and Mr. I'm sorry, Anton Oja, is that okay? Um, you understand that there is a potential appeal process on this I just want to make sure they were fully understood the appeal process before I place my vote so the appeal process is um, it's a statutory process um, it's not something that I'm prepared to explain um, right now I can try to pull the statute and get it but it is spelled out in the statutes that relate to special assessments and it's it's very specific as far as the process goes and, and how the, how it's filed thank you Joe I didn't mean to ask you to explain it. I just want to make sure they knew that process was available to them whether we moved it okay. forward that's all I just wanted to make sure they were aware of that okay if there's no other questions committee uh, we'll vote then on it uh, all in favor respond by aye Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it, I believe, three to zero. And with that, uh, thank you for people at, uh, attending and speaking up. Uh, with that, we can move on to item number four, and that's the assessment hearing for Chase Street from 17th Avenue South to 21st Avenue South. Uh, Mr. Eichstead, do you have anything to guess lead us in on this one with? Uh, Yes. Project. Yep. I'm going to do a, a quick introduction and run through the summary of the report. Um, so, with, for the Chase Street project, uh, there were 27 properties included in that assessment district. Uh, total cost of assessments is $219,694.18. Uh, there were several properties that have additional sidewalk and driveway costs. Uh, included in their assessments that are based upon signed waivers uh, for such things as widening their driveway and and um, those are identified on the individual assessment reports uh, there's three proposed assessment reports that I want to point out uh, publicly 
to the committee and any of those that are listening or that will watch this, um, that two of, two of them were, were corrected, uh, primarily related to um, sidewalk-related charges, and one of them from, uh, was a property owner that called in uh, this morning, uh, wanted us to double-check the quantity that we had for their driveway approach, and uh, that was subsequently adjusted. Those were emailed to the committee uh, this afternoon, so uh, you may not have seen them, but I'll read off the address and at least the parcel numbers here. Um, parcel number 34 was 3516. The proposed assessment is $10,130.90. And all, all of these totals are lower than what was originally included in the packet. That's the, three, four. Right? That's the new number, Yes. Yep. Okay. Correct. Parcel 34-03466. Post assessment $10,893.68. And parcel 34-03474. $7,000. With that, we'll open a public hearing on uh, Chase Street from 17th Avenue South, 21st Avenue South. Is there anybody in the audience that uh, would like to talk about the figures that they were given? Second time, is there anybody out there uh, the 17th Avenue South, 21st Avenue South, K Street, uh, out there that would like to speak? Mr. Chairperson, there are two people that look like they're on the phone. Um, can we ask our IT manager to verify if they're interested in speaking? Yep. Tyler, if you are there, can yep, you make I'm, sure I'm, I'm real quick that here, the, uh, the, the two phone numbers yep, so that are Joe, shown? Joe, can you hear me real quick? Um, so I, I have asked the uh, numbers to unmute. They have to unmute them on their end. There's no way for me to uh, unmute. So once prompted, they have to, I believe, um, I, I'm not 100% certain because I haven't been on the other end of this recording for a while, and they change things often. But I believe the uh, pound six option uh, unmutes the line, and they are un, uh, un, are they are able to uh, or unmute themselves at this time. So um, I'm under the assumption that they can, or having te technical difficulties. Uh, I'm not sure. So that's all for me. Okay. Thank you. Was there anybody out there on the phone line that uh, wishes to or can speak to this project? Hello? There's Hello there. there. Uh, we had a little... Uh, this is Dennis Oz, the Husky at 1820 Chase Street. 
and I got a few things here. One was a comment that was first said in your meeting about communication, and I can't remember exactly what the gentleman said, but I think that uh, I was not communicated well on this project. One thing. Uh, next thing I want to get into is some concrete here. When they started pulling concrete here, they pulled out the approach, then they pulled out the sidewalk, and then they pulled the concrete slabs from the sidewalk, the sidewalk in my garage. And I stopped the guy with his with his uh, end loader type machine and forks to pull the concrete out. And I, said, I said, why are you pulling the sidewalk in that next uh, section out? He says, well, that's what we have to do. And I said, why? He says, well, in case there's a grade change. Well, that concrete was only two and a half years old. The grade was set by the city department, so the sidewalk is flat. The only grade change to me would be from the sidewalk to the street, correct? Hello. I'm here. I'm gonna. Have, I'm gonna have to turn that over to staff. But I. I got sidewalk that was two and a half years old taken out. Four bag mix with fiber in it. Another section up in front of that that was four bag mix. And I don't know what I got replaced out here. It doesn't look as good. Um, why would they do that? When when I have to get a permit to to do that driveway in concrete, you know how old it is. We we can look into Joe, Joe, yeah. Can can we look into that or what can we do? Yeah, yeah. We can look into the specific situation there. I was just pulling it up on the map to familiarize myself with that specific property. But offhand, I, I don't recall what the what the situation might have been. I mean, there was no reason to take that concrete out. Now I'm getting charged for it again. That that concrete you sh you shouldn't be charged for. The okay. stuff up by your the stuff up by your garage. So. Uh, the way that it that it typically works with our with our assessments is that we inspect the driveway approaches and sidewalk sections uh, in, in front of your property that are within the street right of way, and and we look at those to see if what condition those those panels and, and concrete pieces were in ahead of construction, and if if they were in good shape, and the city has to pull them out, the, the city replaces them at no special assessment cost to the property owner. If they're defective, those are the ones that are uh, measured and quantified. And when uh, we get to this point, those are, those are the quantities that should be represented in, in the cost. Anything outside of the right of way, uh, so, so on your private property, that needed to be removed and replaced uh, was subject to the needs of the project. Um, I'll, we'll look into what those needs actually were, but that additional concrete work should not be uh, charged back to you. Right, it should, but it's on my list here. New six-inch sidewalk, 105 square foot, at 550 a square foot, $577.50. So, so your 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 parcel. Your property is one of the properties that has a, a corrected corrected assessment that, that I read at the beginning of the assessment hearing. So, so your sheet has a total that, that calls out a total assessment of $8,531. And there was an error that we identified um, ahead of the, the hearing. So in, in the last couple of days, we identified this issue. And so um, I don't have the, give me a moment, I can look up what the other, the original proposed assessment report, the one that you're looking at. Joe, he, he read the number correctly. I've got it in front of me here. The original one was $8,531.19. That's right. what I so, got. Yep, and so what I wanted to do was, and I found, found the original one, 
Um, so the new six inch sidewalk, you know, the $577.50 and new six inch driveway approach, $867.26. Those are two items that are no longer on the corrected proposed assessment report. But they are on here. I know we, we haven't, so this, this was since we mailed out the proposed assessment report, um, we have found an error, and, and one of those errors was in your your assessment report, including those two six-inch items. So, it, so it's, I guess what I'm saying is it's no, it's no longer my, part of it. Lowered. Yes. Yeah. What yeah. we currently have is a total assessment of seven thousand eighty-six dollars and forty-three cents. So there is a new report that you haven't seen yet. So that's the that's the new number. Okay. And that was one of the three that were read off at the start of the meeting of uh, that there was a uh, revised numbers too. So. Okay. Well, I heard that there was a, a certain number of revised ones, but my name wasn't included. In it, so. No. I we just uh, I think the parcel number was used. I don't think the name for. Yeah, they just no, read the address. Or, or, or weren't put out. I think just the parcel number of the property was put out. So. Okay, well, I didn't hear it. Okay. It's all right. Okay. Any other questions on that? Or? No. On, on the cost of this, um, living here for the 40 years approximately that I've been here, um, I don't see 10 people a day go up and down the street walking or even ride the bike. And Vernon Virginsky former mayor, tried to get a petition together to um, reduce the cost of this by putting in one sidewalk, which would have been plenty. And I don't understand why we put two sidewalks in. And besides that, I watch people go up and down here. Ninety percent of the kids that go up and down this road go out on the street. They don't use the sidewalk. I mean, it, it's already done, but I think, I think Vern should have got a voice in on that. I don't think he got to. All right. Uh, is there anybody else on this project that would like to speak? Anybody else on the phone that'd like to speak yet? One more time, is there anybody out there that would like to speak on uh, uh, hearing here for Chase Street uh, from 17th Avenue South to 21st Avenue South? Hearing none, I will close that part of the public hearing. And committee, uh, uh, item five, which is consider a final resolution for special assessments related to Chase Street from 17th Avenue South to 21st Avenue South. We have had, a, as was listed at the start of the meeting, three corrections that were uh, made in all all the corrections uh, lowered by somewhat uh, from what the original assessment had been. Um, so, Mr. Reich said, what would you, your wishes be? Mr. Reich said, are you going to get those three reports out to the people then? I don't, yeah. What was that, Dean? Yeah. I mean, it's a $1,500 drop yep. for him, so I want to make sure he was met for Mr. Rosenkowski. Ros it's $1,500 less than three. Yeah. Yep. We'll get we'll get those reports mailed out tomorrow.
Would that committee uh, will give you thoughts about considering a final resolution on the special assessments for this project? I'll move for the final resolution for special assessments related to J Street from 17th Avenue South to 21st Avenue South. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to approve the final assessment of resolution for the project. Uh, there's no further questions by the committee. Uh, we can vote. Hearing no further questions or anything, uh, the committee will vote. All in favor, respond by aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. I believe it's three to zero. That takes us to item six, and that's to review and consider amending the preliminary resolution for 15th Street from Apricot to Norton Street. Uh, Joe, would you like to go over this a little bit? Yes, I can do that. So uh, with the design of the 15th Street project, uh, we ran into um, a unique scenario where we've got uh, we've got mainline utilities running north and south on 15th Street, and then uh, on cross streets at Irving Street and the North Monroe Street, there are no utilities uh, running down either of those streets east or west. And on both of those streets, there are mid-block properties that are being supplied. Uh, sewer and water service from the utilities along 15th Street. And so the situation that we run into is that we, we get extremely long water services and sanitary laterals um, that can, can cause um, I guess maintenance and operational type of issues and, and headaches for the property owner. Um, so we, we've got a design that extends uh, sanitary main uh, for some distance along the uh, side streets to shorten up their uh, sanitary laterals. And in doing so, uh, that there would be uh, some assessment cost uh, uh, to, to be shared by those property owners to, re to replace those services. Um, and so in order to do that, um, we've got a draft of a, of a corrected uh, preliminary resolution that would include those additional mid-block properties uh, if the committee uh, were to uh, motion in, in favor of that. Mr. Chairperson, may I add something to that? Yes. Um, I think it's important to note that by discovering these service laterals, these long laterals, whether or not that main were extended if the laterals were just going to be replaced in kind would also still require um, an amendment to this preliminary resolution because work is going to be done on those private service laterals and so there is benefit to those property owners. So um, it's not necessarily due to the design itself, it's just due to the unique nature that um, for whatever reason we, we would speculate that once upon a time there was a thought cost savings, uh, but we have seen uh, countless times over the years where um, these situations, if there is a service lateral that, that does fail because it runs across someone else's property or adjacent to someone else's property, um, it gets very, very expensive and, uh, and problematic. So uh, regardless of, of uh, whether the main were extended or the service was just replaced in kind, the real issue is that it's unusual to see a situation like this, and once it was discovered, um, the necessity to expand that preliminary resolution became apparent. Well, I'd be in favor of amending the uh, preliminary res resolution. Uh, have those people been made aware of this uh, yet, or will they be? They, they will be. They, they have not been noticed yet, so we've got a little bit of catch-up work to do. Uh, to make sure that, that they are noticed and, and that we get any of their questions answered and head of, head of construction. Okay, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Uh, 
So with that, I'd, may, I'd, uh, I'd move that we amend the preliminary, preliminary resolution for 15th Street <coughs> from Apricot uh, to Norton Street. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve the uh, amending the preliminary resolution. Uh, if there's no further qu questions by anybody or the committee, committee we can vote. Uh, all in favor, respond by aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Ayes have it. And with that, that takes us to item number seven, which is to adjourn and entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor respond by aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The meeting's adjourned at 6.47 p.m. Thank you for everybody for participating and your comments that you made and questions asked. So thank you. <laughs>